and we're back with a quick tutorial on battery boxes. Now battery boxes are for when your power requirements need some smoothing out. Normally they're referenced mostly when it comes to solar but they can be required even with petroleum boilers. I was having issues with power spikes draining all my batteries and getting brownouts. This can lead to death spirals where the, the resources that feed your generators get stifled because you're not getting power to them and then next thing you know you're going to be generating even less power and then you're generating no power. So let's just have a, a quick view of probably the simplest way right now to do a battery box. Uh, this is going to be requiring a little bit of a... Uh, there's a sneaky way of getting one of these up and running. What we're going to do is we are going to create a natural tile and we're going to plant some weasel warts in it because why not? Weasel warts are very simple to use. The reason for creating this door trapped in between all these tiles is when we deconstruct it, there's a, a currently a little bit of a, a bug or a glitch that allows you to create a natural tile. The copper ore in this, instead of just falling into debris, will just dump itself into a natural tile. Oh, there you go. We now have a copper ore tile right there. You could do the same with, um, depending on what material you use, of course. You could use copper, aluminum, iron, gold, whatever you like, even steel. This just allows us to make a natural tile so that we can plant a weaselwort on it. Well, we're not going to plant a weaselwort on it. Uh, uh, we're going to get a pip to plant a weaselwort for us. Don't worry, there are alternative ways to make battery boxes, but this is probably the simplest right now. Well, simplest is an exaggeration. More... The... Uh, cheapest, most convenient way to do it. Managing pips is not the worst thing in the world, but they are a bit of an annoyance. What we've done here is we've set up a couple of storage bins, set them to one kilo, and set them to hold wart seeds. Now, in this place, we've only got two wart seeds, so it's a good thing we can demonstrate them this way. Uh, then all you do is you can just uh, deconstruct them, or, well, unselect everything so that the wart seeds fall on the ground, and then we want to get some pips along here so that the pips can plant it. So, quick critter wrangler, uh, critter drop-off, and then we can go wrangle some pips. For some reason it seems there's still a lot of critters alive in this map, as in 24, so I can't drop off anything here just yet. So I'm going to seal up this room and then we're going to drop off some uh, some pips into this little, little location. And how did you trap yourself there? So we have relocated one of these little critters over here, which is perfect. They will eventually at some point get around to picking up that wart seed and planting it in the copper ore, at which point we'll have cooling in this box. After a quick batch of planting, we now have two weasel warts set up and they're cooling this area. Now, of course, their cooling is pathetically small. They, these couldn't even cool. If we fill this room with batteries right now, they'd still the room would still overheat. So we're going to need to put in some hydrogen and get rid of all the oxygen. Right now, we're just uh, stripping out the old tiles and replacing it with everything that is going to be in here when we're finished. So for that, let's check, grab some batteries. We'll say, oh, you know what? Let's use lead. Lead is ridiculously cheap, and it's and if we've done this right, we shouldn't have to worry about it breaking. Now, I give myself a little bit of room with these battery boxes. Each Weezwort can effectively chill about six batteries. Uh, yeah, it's to do with cooling. Mm. Yeah, you know, I'll get more into the details on cooling for later, but for now we're just going to set this up and then we'll go through the numbers of why it works or why theoretically it should work. Uh, now, put in the heavy watt wires. And you'll notice I haven't hooked it up to the power grid yet. We don't want to hook this up until we've got power running through it, or until we've got uh, hydrogen, fill, fill this room with hydrogen. Right now we're just about to seal up this room. Oh, you know what? Before we seal up this room, one last thing. I really don't like those annoying automation wire signals, so it's personal preference of your own, but me personally, I just do like to run an automation wire through them just to stop them going off. And there we go. No annoying symbols coming off them. Worth a little bit of lead, I say. Anyway, the uh, wheeze warts are there busy consuming 250 grams of atmosphere per second, but now what we're going to do is, well, we're going to start siphoning in hydrogen. All we have here is a gas bridge. This gas bridge will bridge this on. That will pour hydrogen into the system. The hydrogen will pour in here, and I stuck in some mesh tiles over here, and I made sure the gas vent is at the opposite side. That means the hydrogen will pop in over here, then it will spread out through the system and then get sucked in by this gas pump. Any hydrogen will get siphoned right back in. Any oxygen will get dumped out of the system. So right now we're draining oxygen out of this box. And any hydrogen that gets let in should stay around the top. That's why we've got the gas pump at the bottom, gas vent at the top. So we'll let this run. This will probably take a few cycles to do. There's there's different ways you could do this. You could vacuum this area out, then fill it with hydrogen only. You could uh, seal off the whole area with bricks and then put in a liquid lock and work your way in that way. There's, there's several ways. It's just... Normally I'm very lazy and this, while it costs a little bit of power, you usually set it up and then you come back a couple of cycles later and it's done. This will take its time, but a good way to make sure that you're, you've got all of the gas is to just turn on the gas overlays and wait until all the oxygen is gone. We want to make sure there's nothing left in there, otherwise it'll interfere with the cooling and mess with the figures and the numbers and we don't want it to do that. We want this to be rock solid. That's the preference with every design you produce. 
and finished. The entire area is completely clear. We've got nothing but hydrogen in the room. Pressure in here is, yeah, we're a climb up close to the two kilo mark. We don't even need that much. We'll lock that door and we'll deconstruct that. By locking the door, we stop, you know, letting any more hydrogen get at the pump. We've stopped injecting new hydrogen. Once the last of that hydrogen pours in, we can start deconstructing the rest of this. You know what, we'll leave that hydrogen there. We might want to feed that back into somewhere. Waste not, whatnot. Uh, deconstruct all of this. Once that's deconstructed, you can't really take the door out. There's ways you could by pulling it back another tile. I'm just not bothered. I'm going to brick it in with insulated tiles. Problem solved. No need to worry about it anymore. Okay, so how is this working? Originally, Weezworts would produce about 12 units of cooling. And by units, I'm going to be talking here about... Uh, where is it? Uh, let's grab a jumbo battery, let's say. A jumbo battery produces 1.25 kdTDUs of heat. Uh, 1.25 kdTDUs is kilodup units or something. Ah, all you need to know is 1 kilodTU is equal to 1 twelfth of what a Weezwort can produce, or in terms of cooling. However, that's only if you domesticate them and give them all the stuff they need. If they're a wild plant, they only work at one quarter capacity, so it's three kilodTUs of cooling. Each one of these batteries produces, ooh, what is it, half a, half a kilodTU. So that means one Weezwort can provide cooling for three DTUs of heat, which is six batteries. Six smart batteries. Now, inevitably there will be questions, but what about using jumbo batteries then? They're cheaper, they store more power, why not, why not? Well, it normally comes back to the biggest and simplest reason. If you're controlling the power on your generators, it's usually you're doing it with a smart battery. You've got automation hooked up, that's what's controlling everything. And that means the maximum amount of power that will ever be stored by the battery will be the amount that a smart battery can store. So for example, just say you completely drain your grid down to zero, uh, then the smart batteries go, oh, we, we've got more power now and more power gets dumped on. Once the smart batteries hit 20 kilojoules, they'll shut off. Even if you built jumbo batteries, the jumbo batteries would stop filling at 20 kilojoules because the smart batteries would have told the power generators to shut down. So that's the biggest reason. Also, there's other reasons like they produce over twice as much heat and they have over twice as much power leakage, as in they waste power or lose power over time. By and large, smart batteries are just better. And they'll work out better as well for you. You can fit more of them in, store more power. They're just more efficient in general. Uh, one thing to note on Huizworts, the, the cooling generated by Huizworts is dependent on the gas that's passing through them. What Huizworts do is they suck up gas, then they cool it down by a set amount and then spit it out. Now, they always cool down gas by the exact same amount. So the more thermal capacity a gas has, the better. So if you look at the specific heat capacity here of hydrogen, it's 2.4. Oxygen has a specific heat capacity of 1, so putting Weezworts in hydrogen gives you twice as much cooling. That's why I gave them a, a rating of 12 kilojoules when they're domesticated and 3 when they're not. Only if they're in hydrogen. If you have them in any other gas, this will not work. So store up some hydrogen. Usually you can... I siphon this off of my uh, self-powered oxygen makers. Just be aware, you have to have them in hydrogen to get the full effect out of them. Now, what I did here was I didn't hook them right up to the battery system straight away. I wanted to make sure that we got a bit of cooling in there. So you could leave these for as long as you want. I'd probably let these cool down to around mm, 30 degrees or so and then plug it in just to make sure it was well cooled. This map, though, is a little odd. This is a very, 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 very hot map. There's a... yeah, it's unusual. This is not the only way, though, to make a battery box. If you are a little bit crazy, what you can do is you can use a, a hot room where you dump all your devices that produce heat. However, you have to make everything out of steel, so it will be very map dependent. If you have a map where you can generate lots of steel, then it might be an option for you to just dump them into a steam room and let the heat be destroyed by steam turbines. It's always a possibility. So this, though, is probably the simplest way to do it, and we're going to plug that in now while I demonstrate some of the other methods, and we'll probably fast forward the clock a bit and see what it's like in about 100 cycles time. But now I want to show you another way you can make battery boxes, and that's just with incidental cooling you're getting off other designs. This is a normal steam turbine, steam, ah, cool vent steam tamer, ah, cool steam vent tamer. As a cool steam vent tamer, it generates this little ice box here that's been used to cool that. And if you want, you could just extend this a little bit to cool even more. Simplest thing to do, though, is stick in a couple of diamond window tiles right here and use those diamond window tiles to spread out the chill. Fortunately, we'll have to be a little bit crafty to make sure we don't drop any of the water out, but that shouldn't be too much of a deal breaker. All you do is brick it in on those sides like that. You know what, we'll brick it in there too. And now that it's bricked in on all sides, what you want to do is just grab a diamond window tile. Well, it doesn't have to be diamond, it can be metal, You just some sort of tile that's good at transferring heat. 
or temperature te thermal conductivity wise so most metal tiles and diamond is probably one of the best and one of those ones you usually don't have much of a use for when you get your hands on it this allows us to spread out the amount of areas we could pull chill out of and now we have replaced all the insulating tiles that used to be keeping the heat in well or the temp the chill in with diamond tiles now let's just grab this little incidental cooling we've got lying about the place and turn that into a uh, into a battery box on this one i am doing nothing fancy we are just going to build a big insulated box and we're going to squeeze in as many batteries as we can. One aqua tuner can generate so much cooling it could cool. I'm pretty sure one aqua tuner even using just polluted water could cool a map just covered entirely in batteries. Well, close enough. And now we squeeze in as many batteries as we possibly can. There is no subtlety involved here. I am just chucking in as many batteries as I can possibly fit. That's it. There's no there's no grand plan. There was no master plan on making this. These things are usually, if you've got some incidental cooling lying around, just chuck in as many batteries as you can. Don't worry too much about the size or shape of it. We're going to spread out the cooling as needs be. Oh, better get rid of some of that. We now have a decent sized battery box up and running, though I am going to add in some more a little bit later. But we do want to spread around some cooling just to make sure that nowhere it gets too hot. So what we'll do is we will just run some granite piping. Just, this is going to be regular gas granite piping. We don't need anything too crazy. Down here, back again, down here, back again. Oh, you know what? We will do a double layer down here. And all the way back up. Oh, I probably should put direction on that, shouldn't I? Note to self, always make sure you've got direction. Direction is good. And there, get rid of those, there. And that should be it. Then we just have to fill that up with a gas, and honestly, it doesn't even matter what type of gas it is, just as long as it has okay thermal conductivity, I'm just going to dump oxygen into this. So the gas pump has been hooked up, and we're just dumping oxygen into this line. I'm just going to fill that up there. Maybe make sure you don't have any other gases lying around. You really do want to fill it up with just one gas type, otherwise you can end up with small packets in the pipe. It's not the biggest deal, but I would prefer for a uniform sake to have all the just one gas. All that's happening is the gas is rotating through the box and then coming back up here. And I've just put in a few strips of aluminum or radiant gas piping. That will soak up chill out of this box and spread it out throughout the rest of the the, uh, the battery box. Oh, and before we finish this off or close everything up, I do want to just put automation wires through these. I really, really do not like those symbols sticking out all the time. Especially if it's going to be in an area I may have to look at. Done. Whole box completely encased. We just have that gas flowing around. The only reason that gas is there is just to spread the chill around so that it ends up uniform. Otherwise, you could end up with some parts getting hotter and some parts getting colder. It'd take a long time for the temperature to move from this area to that area. So instead, we just rotate it around with gas. Now, let's plug this sucker in. Uh, power. This, of course gives you an awful lot more battery storage potential and it's quite cheap you're just running it off the excess cooling from uh, the steam vent tamer now bear in mind the steam vent tamer here it is costing you energy to provide cooling but the amount of cooling required for batteries is minuscule in comparison to what you're the, the amount of cooling you'll be spending on other things batteries are nothing so we'll leave this here we'll leave that there and then we'll skip the game forward about well to us about cycle 1000 and see how they held up this one i would be a little bit worried about this is i wouldn't normally be worried about on a map like this this is a very, very hot map. There was no attempt made to cool down the vast majority of it, and uh, yeah, it's effectively a giant sauna. So with this, it's perfectly balanced, but I'd be worried that a little bit of heat from outside would leak in, and these smart batteries can only survive up to 55C. So this will be a little bit delicate. This one here shouldn't even notice at all. Anyway, we'll skip it forward and see what happens in the, uh, in the meantime. So, uh, the game crashed while I was away, so... <laughs> I didn't really get that many cycles in for enough testing. However, if we check here... Oh yeah, the temperature in here is fine. And it's been slowly decreasing down here. That was at 44, 46 or something, I think, when the time we left it. The gas down there, so that's definitely cooling down. This one up here, however, not so good. I forgot about this heavy watt joint plate right here in the corner. That's causing issues. The reason being it's leaking heat in from... Well, heat from the outside is leaking in. It's 60, 70 degrees in this map. It's a ridiculously hot map, don't ask. But that is leaking in that direction, so I need to put in a vacuum joint seal. Just pretty much like these. So I might as well have a quick cover of how you do one of those, because they're very handy. And all it costs you is a mini gas pump, which is nothing. This is a three-way intersection, so I'm going to have a joint plate here, another one here, and another one over there, and a little vacuum pump in the middle. It'll all become clear as this uh, progresses along at speed. All we'll do is uh, get ready to delete those when the time comes. 
all we're doing is creating a little workaround here so that when I delete that segment to replace it with a heavy watch joint plate, it doesn't cause the whole power grid at the bottom half of the map to fall over. See, like that. And then I'll have to delete this one. And then overwrite that when the time comes as well. Now that the joint plates are in, we can delete the old vestigial wires. And I've left myself just a tiny little gap here so we can get a little mini gas pump in. Oh wait, rotate that. It'll only fit in one orientation, the reason being there's a... Uh, uh, what do you call it? There's going to be uh, power connectors in the way. Anyway, we'll grab the ventilation from this and we will... You know what, we'll just vent it out this way. It doesn't really matter where this goes. This is just going to be the gas that's trapped in there. Gas pump in place. Pretty much everything is about where we need it. We'll just grab this and what we'll do is we'll just wall it in up the sides. Well, I'm trying not to do this all at once because... <laughs> Because if I do, I'll probably trap my duplicates, as I normally do. Uh, yeah, just up to about there. And then once that's finished, we can wall in this side. That will create a complete seal. And then the gas pump can get to work turning that into a vacuum. And there we go. A three-way joint plate that's going to end up a vacuum. The reason you want a vacuum is it doesn't allow the transfer of temperature, which means there'll be no heat able to leak into this box and mess up the temperature in here. So it should remain stable forever. Though, insulated tiles are not perfect insulators. If you really wanted to make this perfect, you would double layer it. The reason being, items that are double layered in insulated tiles, it's almost impossible for them to exchange heat. Just the way the heat mechanics work in this game, the time it would take for the heat transfer would be measured in eons. It's just, it's so long, it's ridiculous. Anyway, that should cover that. Uh, this design down here, uh, I know this is kind of ghetto and not really a standard issue design because we're running it off a, another design. But if you have any sort of steam turbine heat deletion device that's generating an ice box, you can just tack a battery box onto it. Gas has been removed entirely from this area. This is now a perfect vacuum, and as such, temperature cannot transfer through here at all. It is a completely, perfectly sealed area. The only annoying part is that gas symbol, which will remain there forever and ever and haunt your nightmares. Or your dreams, whichever. But that should cover everything to do with battery boxes, or everything you should really need for them. Uh, generally, you don't need huge battery boxes early on. It's only when you start getting up to a larger power grid. Early on in the game, all you're going to need is a couple of coal generators and one smart battery should be fine. It's only as you get later into the game and you start getting into the more power intensive uh, devices. Aqua tuners, prime target, they're 1.2 kilowatts. Metal refineries, 1.2 kilowatts. Once you start dumping a lot of those onto your network, the potential power draw can quickly swamp your power generation. Just have some batteries on to smooth the flow and it can keep you going during the downtime. Anyway, Hope this was at least mildly informative for you and uh, good luck.